Indeed, three great products, and we can talk a lot about these products, but before that, the fundamental of the product is the platform. I request you to come to see the look into the platform, and I'll narrate the story of how we did this differently. I'm very pleased to announce this platform. This platform is natively built EV. It's, called, it's a skateboard platform. It runs in 800 volt electric architecture, one of the compact e-motor that are located at the rear of the things, rear of the vehicle. This allows us to have a floor height at 500 millimeter from the ground, which is the best in class. What does this mean is if there is 120 parcels to be delivered in a month every day, 120 parcels, this person is going to save, avoid climbing an Eiffel Tower. That's why the floor height is so important for them. And then the electrical system being 800 volt, we have put the battery pack between the wheelbase, and the battery pack is structurally rigid, which can take every related torsion and rigidity. The battery runs in two chemistry, and the battery is also going to be super, super efficient, because in 18 minutes, we can charge the full battery, which is, again, the total cost of usage. We have ensured that in the electrical system, it's a, it's a flat floor. This allows us to have modularity of building different set of body types. That's something very important when you invest on a platform. So that's something that we could do coolly here. All the suspension characters are completely different here. This allows us to have the maneuverability of a B-segment car, like a Polo or a Renault Clio. So that's something that we have done on this genetics of the platform. So platform is modular, urban friendly, and it is a high technology on this. I, we have built 20 platforms. I and Philip drove some of the cars. So this is at our uh, test center where the platform is put on a different body type, but this is a platform built, 20 platforms. We have covered uh, all, almost 9,000 hours of driving. Uh, and you can see that in a parallel parking, it really works like a car. And this is something that's very important for the, the, the users, the drivers who are having so much difficulty in, in looking into the parking. And looking into the turning circle diameter, this is like a Polo or Clio. You can see that this is something that, that is amazing in terms of urban friendly. That means all the narrow roads of Europe, you will be able to maneuverable in a very well way. Yeah? So this is something that clever what we did on the platform. And now from the platform, I take you to, to the three vehicles which we built over this platform, and I go one by one. The first body type, we call it as a panel van in the world of, of, of the vans, which is panel van. It comes in two lengths, two wheelbases, and it comes at 1.9 meter height. This is something very important for the underground parking. And this van is shorter than ICE vehicles by 250 millimeter by length. This means we are able to give more cubic volume for the given length of the car. Now, being said all of the physics of the car, I now hand over to Louis, who will talk about the styling attributes of this van. Thank you, Krishnan. So you can see here a very modern vehicle, timeless, because uh, the EV vehicle will stay longer on the road, timeless and aerodynamic. Uh, we were talking about urban friendly. Uh, we don't have a front overhang anymore. It's super short. We don't have corners. So it's going to be super agile in the, in the city, super easy for the driver because we have a three-part windshield. So the visibility will be uh, absolutely great. In terms of aerodynamic, we have a mono volume uh, vehicle. We have uh, the body side that are really slick and uh, with a thick and big uh, protection in the bottom of the, the body side. And on the rear end, you will be able to see it uh, uh, later today. Uh, we have winglets and, uh, and also spoiler and a little bit of uh, tighten up the, uh, the, the rear end for the, uh, the aerodynamic in order to increase uh, the, uh, the autonomy of, of the car. So looking at the second vehicle here, it's uh, the best of both worlds because of the rigidity of the, uh, of the platform 
uh, we have the rigidity of a chassis cab, but at a height of a floor cab. Uh, we have the same front end, of course, it's the same vehicle. And uh, if I can say a word on the cockpit, you will be able to see also the cockpit later. Uh, we have a very modern uh, toolbox, uh, if I may say, uh, on the uh, instrument panel. A big 10 screen uh, cluster, 12 inch navigation system. And of course, we will have the, the perceived quality of a, of a, um, of a personal car. Okay, and uh, we, are, we put a lot of attention also on the seat, on the materials. And of course, uh, the box you see here uh, is just one example. Uh, you can imagine all sorts of, of boxes uh, for big volumes, for fridge, or even tippers for construction equipment. So in both these cars or in the platform, we have, especially in the cargo van, we have ensured that we are removing all the reinforcement that are needed on a chassis cap. Uh, you save 300 kilogram, which is the payload that will be given to the customer. And the most important thing is we are also putting the EPTO, electric power takeoff. This allows us to put any of the refrigerated boxes or any of the electric devices that can be attached to the cargo van. The parts until this line of the car are completely carry over. That means in the production line, we are going to completely ensure that there is a scale of operation in terms of cost efficiency and the perceived quality of the car. Now let's go to the third one. Let's go to the uh, iconic vehicle, the, the step-in van. So the step-in van is having the same front end as the, uh, as the panel van. Uh, it, it's based on the same platform, right? you have to keep that in mind. So this vehicle will be 527 meter. It's 2.6 meter high and 190 uh, width. We also have the three-part windshield for uh, the best visibility. Uh, we are carrying over or carrying across the, uh, the IP, the instrument panel. So in a low volume production of production car, we will get the same perceived quality as a high, high volume production car. We have two sliding doors that are located in the cockpit. Sliding, you don't need to extract them to, uh, to slide. It's uh, super easy to maneuver. And in the back, we have, uh, we have a shutter to fill uh, the, the truck during the morning. Krishnan, yeah. I leave you the floor. You. So we, we have s closely studied the North American vans that have completely optimized the B2B world. But we wanted to bring all the attributes that how this can be deployed in the European street. And second one is scale of operation. As you can see, that all the three vehicles will have common across parts. This allows us to run the production in a flawless manner in the industry. There are elements that we have put in this car. Yeah. The first one is driver ergonomics. We looked into the details of how the driver need to be positioned in the vehicle compared to the compared to the other ones where there is a lot amount of ingress and egress for the driver. So we located the hitch point of the driver in such a way the driver is able to have a fatigue-free life. The driver safety is attached to the driver. Driver safety is attached to the fatigue and we have paid a lot of attention on the visibility for the driver, the opening effort and closing effort of the driver. Since it is going to be a connected device, coming running in a centralized architecture, all the goods that are going to be mobilized from this vehicle is going to be completely ring fenced. That means the driver has the full control on the security of the goods. Finally, this is a productivity mission. This is a productivity mission that is going to completely change the B2B world. For the driver, in order to deliver the parcel, we ran a lot of clinics and how much time they are spending on driving and how much time is picking the parcel and deliver. And that's why we prepared a walk-in version with 1.9 meters of head clearance. This allows the driver to seamlessly not only just drive, but pick the parcel and deliver at each of the location. So we have been careful to, ha to design the headliners and the car to ensure that the driver is able to uh, seamlessly operate in all the manner. The rear one is not uh, the rear of the vehicle. We don't have the French doors. We have the shutters which allow us, the driver, to easily load and unload the car. 
One of a salient feature of this vehicle is called the delivery button. This is, this is a game changer. Here, you can reconfigure the different functionality thanks to the SDV. You can configure different functionalities that you can put on the button. You can have the blinkers on. You can have the doors open and close. You can pass on messages on alerts. You can pass messages on what's, what sort of functionalities that are. There are five or six functionality. Each cluster of the customer, whether it's a logistic operator or parcel deliver, they can reconfigure that thanks to the SDV architecture. So in a, in this object is an object which is a productivity tool. And we have ensured that all the attributes what we have put in this object is addressing the needs of the urban logistics. We have carefully ensured that the floor height of the platform is taken care of, but the step also is designed in such a way that there is an easy ingress and ingress for the driver. These are the hardware attributes. But as I say, when you want to solve the urban logistics, it's a solution that is driven from the hardware and connecting it to the software and how the fleet can completely monitor. So over to this, I will now pass on to Pierre, who will take you through the solutions that we are building around these hardwares to create the complete value chain for the, for the program.